was a long night yesterday, right? So if, if anybody is falling asleep, I can forgive. I would understand. So um, for those who do not know me, uh, something about me. My name is Radek Suski. I am the former OSM member. Um, I am Joomla events team leader at the moment. At, on the daily ba basis, I am software developer. I am one of the developer of the Sobi Pro extension. The second one is my wife, Sigrid. Uh, I have to say I'm very, very lucky to have uh, such a wonderful woman on my side, and I tell you exactly why. Uh, as we met, I was looking like this. And at, <laughs> and at, at that time, Sigrid kept talking, uh, uh, telling me that she probably would never fall in love with a bald man with glasses and, and belly. <laughs> and, and now, 14 years later, she still loves me. So, as I cannot do much about my, my glasses and, and my missing hair, I thought I could do something about my belly. And about two years ago, I started to... Um, mountain biking, bicycling, uh, doing it a lot at the moment. And the funny thing is, um, since I started to doing it, I actually gained weight instead of losing it. And I have really no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my second hobby. Um, not, it's not eating, but actually uh, traveling to different Joomla events. This is Joomla. Uh, the Bosnia and Herzegovina two years ago, I think. Um, I have a usual uh, a rule that all questions should go after the presentation, and uh, but because of the, um, I think this is a kind of different kind of uh, presentation, so I would like to ask you if you have any questions while this presentation, just let me know and I will try to answer it. Okay, um, so let's go. Short case study, um, in 2011, uh, we decided to change our um, business model from selling software to selling subscription. Um, at that time, we had uh, three websites for Sobi2. Um, one was the Joomla, the main website, the main company website, that was the sixio.net, uh, based on Joomla 1.0. The second one was our support area, that was forum, based on sim simple machine form. And the third one was shop, where we are selling um, our subscription uh, with Joomla 1.5 and, and Virtumat. And to provide this, um, download area and kind of club uh, area for our clients, we create a fourth website, sobipro.sixu.net. This website doesn't exist anymore, which was actually the website where people could log in and download software and read the manual and so on. So the um, problem was uh, we, need to, uh, we needed to, uh, to create kind of connection between those three websites. The fourth one wasn't really important because it was just a content and news and so on. So what we did is the user could go to the shop sectionnet and buy a subscription. And then um, he could simply uh, go to the sobipro.sixio.net and log in with his shop user data. And what we did is was a, a plugin, a Joomla plugin, which was using the unauthenticate method. And when a user is going to this website and the, the, to, the, to the club website, and the user is not in the database, this plugin was simply checking in the shop website, shop database, and checking if the credential and username uh, is correct and simply transferring the entire user account from the shop to the new website. So this was pretty easy. We could do this with our plugin with one method. The other thing was we needed to provide um, a method to, uh, f for the user that he could uh, register in the forum, uh, or b basically to provide his username in the forum so he could get access to a separate club area for our, uh, for our members. And unfortunately, this is nothing we could do with a plugin at that time. We had to um, 
create a component which was actually an, an extended com user component where the user could simply add his username in the forum and password and um, we were checking it and if the user had a valid, valid subscription, we simply um, enabled his subscription as well in the same simple machine form. But this was actually still a really complicated system and people kept complaining about it because, yeah, it was pretty complicated. So um, in 2014, um, end of the 2014, we decided to revise the entire system and create one website with Joomla 3 uh, to use Sobi Pro for every content. I think it's obvious why. Um, important was for, our, for us the mo mobile friendly website, so responsive, not, uh, not different website for mobile and different website for desktop, just simple one website with responsive design. And for that we decided to use, to implement Bootstrap 3 as well. And the result was um, we create a new website with Joomla 3, with Sobi Pro. Uh, we use a Joostrap template for the responsive web design mainly. We decide to switch from Virtumart to Akiba subscription because we are not selling any software anymore, but we are selling subscription. And they use Akiba ticket system for um, support area. And we basically use the J2XML for transfer all those users from the old websites to the new one. So how we did it? Uh, the first possibility to, to customize Joomla is uh, templates override. Um, Sigit created basically overrides for every software we are using, for Akiba ticket system, for Akiba um, subscription, for different forms uh, we are using, like Comuser and so on. Um, I'm not going to explain much about uh, overrides because I know everybody knows there is a template override for Joomla. It's well doc documented. Uh, it's a short link to the documentation. And basically, thanks to our um, great documentation team, <laughs> it's really well documented, so you can basically read everything out on the website on the docs, docs website. Um, so the first thing we wanted to have is Bootstrap 3, as I, as I said before. Uh, Joostrap was very helpful by them, but it wasn't the entire solution. The main problem we have, as you can see, after we install Joostrap and uh, Joomla, um, this is how you, the regular form in Joomla was looking like. And this is what actually it should look like. And the main problem was because um, it was missing one particular class called form control yeah, in the input elements. We could actually do all templates override, but it would simply take uh, too much time. So we decided to write a plugin. Um, and at the time, we, we decided to write one plugin for everything, for every modification where you, we are doing at our website. I think uh, Gisa Risma is doing a presentation about similar solution today, which is really uh, <laughs> nice. So what we did, we used the on after render method in a plugin. We took the entire um, entire body which was generated at the time, and we were searching for input elements, text area select, and so on. And we simply add the form control class, and that's it. Really simple solution with a little bit code. So the next thing we did, we wanted to do is um, we wanted to modify Akeba subscription a little bit. And um, especially an Akeba subscription is sending emails uh, with, con with uh, confirmation about new subscription and so on. Nicolas is doing um, all those coupon code and upgrade and so on. And we didn't want it to have it always there. Only in the case that someone that, uh, in the, in the, uh, indeed was using some, some discount code and so on. So we implemented kind of if and if logic in those templates. And how we did it? Of course, we used plugin as well. <laughs> and the thing I, I really love about Nicolas software, he has pl uh, pl plugins trigger for everything. 
these really, uh, you can modify it in, in Akiba subscription or Akiba ticket system, everything, because he's firing plugin on, on, on every possibility. So this is what we did. We used the on Akiba subscription after process tag. <laughs> and simply, we are checking for the if and if. Um, you see, I, I love regular expression. Um, so we are checking for the if and if, and if the if the um, condition is met, then we are li uh, li leaving it uh, the line as as it was, and if the condition doesn't met, that we are simply removing it. Um, if everyone is, uh, if anybody is using Sobi Pro. Um, we have a kind of a app store in Sobi Pro where you can actually go to in the backend in the Sobi Pro and install this different application for Sobi Pro directly in, in Sobi Pro itself. Um, but we are doing it mainly only for um, for our uh, for our club club members. So to do this, we need the possibility to identify the user, and so the user has to add a kind of um, uh, repository token in Sobi Pro installation itself in the backend. And on the website, we need the possibility to generate this token. So, um, this is uh, the view of Akiba subscription, of one particular subscription, and we simply added in the template um, a button where the user can generate token. But the button itself is the, does not nothing at the moment, it's just a button. Um, I think it's a good time to explain something about Joomla extension itself, uh, how it was designed 10 years ago. Uh, so in Joomla, we have modules, which allows us to display some kind of stuff on the web, on the site, from the con content and so on. We have uh, plugins. This is what we are using the whole time now. And we have um, components. This is the big thing in the middle of mostly in the middle of, uh, of the uh, Joomla website. The thing is, we have 2015 and now, and the techniques changed a lot. It's not more the simple static HTML website, or which has been generated, and nothing more is going to happen. We have, for example, we want to have sometimes a module which um, simply gives some feedback to the user, or the user can change something in this module. So this is not possible because at that time a user see this module, everything uh, from the module has been already executed and nothing can be changed. Um, the nice thing would be to use Ajax, so the user can, so for example, provide some in input and we can change the information showing in the module. But uh, we cannot call the module directly. Although I saw really some badly written module, that are using um, that are using Ajax and calling the PHP file from the module directly, which is really a bad idea because that way you are basically leveraging the whole security layer in Joomla. Um, but Joomla developers uh, were aware of this problem, and um, a very nice guy called Matt Thomas created a component called ComAjax. Does anybody know what this component does? <laughs> okay, so this is really a cool extension, which basically allow us to call module or plugin from Ajax. So I can uh, do, so I can create, for example, a module and uh, a script which calling uh, the com Ajax extension and tell the com Ajax extension to call a method in my module, which is pretty cool, or in my plugin as well. And that way, we are not leveraging the Joomla security layer, but we can have some um, background information hold with Ajax extension. And this is basically what we did. Um, when you click on the generate token uh, button in the com Akiba, Akiba subscription, we are calling the com Ajax extension and tell the com Ajax extension to, to call our plugin. And then in the plugin, we implementing the entire business logic. Um, 
Um, redirect. Um, when you are go, when you are using Akiba ticket system, and for example, the, there is a new answer from our support staff, right? And the user who started the ticket, he is getting an email, and said someone answered to your ticket. Click on this link, and the user is clicking on the link, and he's, however, not logged in in the website. So he is getting a really bad 403 um, access denied um, error message. This is actually the correct behavior, but it's not really user friendly, right? Um, when, when the user see access denied or permission denied uh, error message, um, he think something, something really bad happens right now. And actually he just won't, wasn't locked in. So what we did, we used the error.php file, which is usually in, which, in, in each template in Joomla, and we're simply checking here if the error code was 403, and if it came from Akiba ticket system, and in that case, we are storing the, the URL the user was trying to access, setting it in the uh, session from Joomla, and redirecting him to the login form. And then, again, in the plugin, we have the, the method on user after login. And when the user logged in at the time, we are checking, again, if we have some redirect in the session. And if so, in that case, we're simply redirecting him back to the ticket he was trying to access. But he wasn't logged in at the time. At the beginning, as we started using Akiba ticket system, we had the idea to have uh, one, one category in ticket system open to everyone, so people could start uh, state some kind of precise questions. Wasn't a really good idea, as Nicolas tell me later, it wasn't designed that way. So, but, but uh, we tried at the beginning and we wanted to have a capture in the ticket system for the public which was uh, available for public, uh, for unregistered user. And we used, of course, our plugin again, and used the method on before ATS controller was safe, where we are checking if the user provided the right recapture code. Another change in the template. Um, um, was anyone from from here in the um, Rob Kesley, Rob Kesley, Robert Kesley um, session before yesterday? We were talking about session speed and so on. The one thing he told you, um, that we shouldn't use too much, too many CSS and JavaScript file, because every CSS and JavaScript file is causing one request and uh, the, the limit uh, in browser is, I, I think, at the time that you can only do five or six requests at the same moment. So what we did, for example, here is we removed from the template all JavaScript file, on all CSS file, and replaced it with one PHP file, which is going to be loaded like a JavaScript file or CSS file. And in this file, we simply defined all those files we are need, we are needing, and simply outputting in one after one, one after another. So that way, we have only one request from the website, and then we are generating all those files at once. Um, The last one, we have some people from PLT. I, I hope I'm not going to be killed after that. <laughs> okay, um, it's very dangerous. If you, if you don't have to, if there's any other solution to do this, never use it. But there is a possibility in Joomla to basically override every single class in Joomla or from other component extensions. You can, for example, we had the problem in Akeba ticket system the particular view is ordered not that way we would like to have. And I understand why Nicolas did it, 
because it makes sense uh, that way he is using it, but it didn't the, the way we are using it. So we wanted to change the ordering of tickets. There was no plugin because it's model model and there actually we don't have many triggers models. So what we did, we took his model file, model tickets, and simply told Joomla that Joomla should register our file instead of this one from Nicolas. And we are using our file for this one, for this functionality. The thing is, however, um, well, when you are doing it, you have to be very careful because now, example, every time uh, Nicolas is releasing a new Akiba ticket system, we have to check if in this file something has been changed because we have to basically um, move those changes to our file as well. So um, when you are doing it, for example, because you can do this as well with core Joomla file, you have to be sure that every time you are updating Joomla that this file is synchronized. It's not, not really a hack, but I think it's very close to a hack. So if you can if you can avoid it, don't do this. But it is also a possibility to do to to change something in Joomla. So I you could probably realize basically the best method to change something in Joomla to customize something in Joomla is plugins. You can do a lot with plugins, really a lot. We have a lot of methods to we could use. Uh, on user authenticate, for example, we used it as you see, as you saw, to to uh, execute this re redirect after the user has been logged. But you could basically use it for, I don't know, for example, um, log files to check um, to to log when a particular user has been logged in in the website, or for many other possibilities. Uh, we have the on content prepare method which basically is execute before the, um, before the content is made to generate it. Uh, and I think the, the, is the um, email clocking using this method? Or the other one? Email, email clocking. No, I think it's an after render. Yeah, it's system plugin, but yeah. So basically, uh, you, uh, in this method, you are getting a, uh, the content that should be generated, and you can modify the content completely. For example, if, it, the, the, if I'm not wrong that the uh, email clocking is using it, then you could that it actually looking for email addresses in plain text and changing those readable email addresses with a piece of JavaScript code. On after render, this is the method we are using to change the form to add the class. It's basically you can get the entire generated body and modify it as well. You could, for example, add um, a statistic tracking before end of the body, something like this. On before compile head is a really cool method. We are not using it in the, in, on the website, but we are using it in Sobi Pro itself. This is basically a method which is being called before the Joomla header is being generated. generated. Um, I could imagine that you could use it, for example, we all know that we have many extensions and loading own J jQuery and sometimes different versions, and it leads to a lot of issues. So this is... On content view, okay. <laughs> so, okay, that's cool. So, uh, so you could actu actually in this method check if there is no, there is more than one definition for jQuery, and remove one of those. You could manage basically CSS file, JavaScript file, and whatsoever. This is really cool method. Um, on user after logging, oh, this is the method we are using to redirect. Sorry. <laughs> so basically, this is the method we, you can you can use after the the user has been logged in successfully logged in the, into the website. Uh, so. As I said before, um, plugins is the most powerful tool to, to customize your website. And there is a really good book, I don't know if you can see it, from G.C. Witzma as well. Um, I have this book, I read it. This book is really, really good. This is really good book, especially for 
or also for non-programmers. There is a lot of examples, and this is really good explainer. They had, uh, it's not just examples, it's uh, an idea as how you can use different plugin method and for what. So I'm highly recommending it. I think he's selling this book as well in the, in the lobby. Oh, okay, cool. So highly recommended, really. Thank you, pardon? GC, this is program, yeah, programming Joomla plugin. Yeah, what? what? Yes, you're right, you're right, Ma. Okay, thank you. I was wondering how it's spelled. <laughs> but he's here in the lobby, he's selling this book as well. So, so you can see we have the endless possibilities to, to, to customize Joomla. We can use the plugins, uh, we can use the template. Um, however, one thing about templates uh, or templates override, I personally think it is not good idea to implement business logic in templates. Templates are actually templates. It should display something. Okay, we have, um, we can, however, modify the, the main template we see it that many template designer is they they are implementing the some kind of business logic in this template because they need it sometimes just not in the templates override so we can use the error php file we can use template we can use plugins we can use um, whatever you need but basically the only limit is your imagination <laughs> okay uh, i was fast um, any questions? Yeah, yeah, of course. This is true, but this is still the best way to modify something. That's true. Depending on what you do, yeah, it could take more time. Yeah. And then you use this like way for 10 to 20 seconds, but your plugin can download all social media pictures from Facebook or whatever. So I think that people should be aware of that. That should be aware that is, of, of course, performance. One thing I, what you, one thing I was, was forgot to say, that basically, it's the only limit is really your image, imagination. But I know that I am developer. That's easy for me to say I can modify something and I'm sure it is going to work. But I can imagine that many people do not have this um, this understanding for code. So if you no, don't know if something can be done, just ask in forum. Or for example, I think it's good idea. Also, we have a Joomla um, area at StackExchange.com. Joomla.StackExchange.com. This is really good uh, good way to ask someone if something can be done and ask for help. Yeah. Uh, because in the plugin is a very effective way that you can use code that needs to be executed somewhere in the world to see the information that needs to be used. The code that's entered is good. The code that was actually called that plugin is good for the thing. Oh, yeah. So no, I was going to say, the point is that if you add something, uh, uh, my latest uh, template plugin is the one for the geolocation. I can get the geolocation where I have been. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I, it's a good point. For example, I saw a lot of plugins before. I don't know if I'm still doing it. That actually was designed for uh, front end, but they are working in back end as well because they are not checking if they in, in the admin area or on, on the side. And this is uh, was uh, was really bad because the, the functionality was designed specifically for front end and it was slowing down the back end because they had this information not that they was expecting. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I I know. If we had this discussion, I think this is the only uh, the, the only reason why we actually sometimes have to do exit. Yeah, and switch all the error, error reporting because some plugins are really badly written, and we are expecting JSON response, and this doesn't work anymore. Yeah, this is definitely yes. And therefore, I always say, if you don't know, if you are not sure, if you are doing it right, then ask. We are there to help. And asking is free. Yeah. A big one. Model override. Yeah, we did this. Yeah. No, oh yeah, this was in the plugin as well, in the constructor from the plugin. It was the best way because you need to do it really early. So the constructor for the plugin was, uh, I thought, the best idea. You didn't change the index case. No, no, I didn't. No, 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 To override of what of template? I think that's actually be probably more uh, efficient way when you can do this in the template override because it is actually the right way for for people that are not developers. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it depends very much on what are you doing. On what we are trying to do, what do you trying to achieve? So the problem with the template of like the right said with this model of the right, it's something I have the problem with people's descriptions who came up with it. They said my whole template of my book. Yeah, I know, I remember. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. As I said, I I still think that it's really close to hacking, and I. I yeah.
Ya. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do uh, things like this in a plugin. Uh, the only reason why we are actually overwritten the model because uh, you couldn't change this with a plugin or something. It wasn't a plugin trigger. Even in Nicolas, there are a lot of triggers, but there was no. Yeah. <laughs> But it's cool because you actually can modify whatever you want. Okay, no, that's good. That's good. Any more questions? Okay, then, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>